In today's video, we'll be talking about the usability aspects of running your resin 3D printer. Now, these machines have become incredibly cheap and affordable in the last few years. There's a lot of things that are very different about them compared to your more common traditional FDM 3D printers like this. So without further ado, let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So as I said, resin 3D printers, that is DLP or SLA technologies or others, have become incredibly affordable and accessible in the last few years, which is awesome because these machines can produce incredible detail models. This one in particular is the Anycubic Photon, but I've tried many in the past, such as the Form 2 and the Moai SLA. The thing about these machines though, is they're very different to our FDM 3D printers that you might be more familiar with. Getting parts sent to them, preparing files, and getting them off the machine isn't as simple as just getting a spatula and just going and popping it off the bed. So in this video, I wanna go through some of the aspects of using these machines in terms of usability and safety, which I don't feel have been addressed properly on the internet. Starting with the files themselves. When you send files to a resin 3D printer, these machines aren't capable of producing infill like you might be familiar with with a FDM 3D printer. So a sphere, for example, won't print with a grid infill, it'll print solid on a resin system, which is a waste of resin and makes the part extremely large and heavy and difficult to cure. So the first thing you need to understand is if you're sending a file that has a large surface area, you might need to what's called hollow it out or shell it. And I have a whole tutorial here on where you can learn to use Mesh Mixer to hollow out your model. Once you have your model hollowed, you need to understand that orientations in resin systems are different again to FDM. For example, you get a better quality finish in my experience if you tip the model at an angle. For example, this Maker Coin, I tipped it back at a slight angle to give it a better surface finish than if I just printed it flat like you would do on an FDM. But I feel I should talk about the most important aspect of these SLA and DLP resin systems, safety. With an FDM 3D printer, the worst that might happen to you is you might have a bit of a smell and you might burn yourself but these systems use UV cured resins, which are toxic. And they have a whole suite of safety features around them to make sure that you do not touch with your bare hands any of the uncured resin. Once it's cured, it's fine. But when it's not, it is actually a serious safety hazard. So let me show you the full process of removing prints from a resin printer. This machine has just finished a Maker Coin, but before I touch anything inside, you're gonna need gloves. Now these machines usually come with one or two pairs, go buy a huge packet because they are not reusable. You only get one shot per print, they're cheap. And by wearing these, you protect your skin and your fingers from the uncured resin. So with gloves on, I feel safe to handle the bottle and I can refill the, the vat if I need to, and I can also take parts out. But you don't wanna to touch anything to do with the uncured side of the printer without wearing gloves. This is extremely, extremely important. I cannot stress it enough. Next is how you're gonna clean the print. To clean uncured resin off the print, because it's got a coating of uncured resin around the cured part, you're gonna need a solvent to remove it. Now, a lot of people will use isopropyl alcohol, which is this here, you know, this is 99% IPA, isopropyl alcohol. It does a really good job of dissolving the uncured resin off the part. You fill up a, a chamber and you pop the part into it. If you're in Australia though, you might struggle to find IPA of this percentage um, strength. So I actually found that methylated spirits actually works just as well. You might find with clear resins, it does m perhaps make it cloudy, but, in other, but otherwise it works really well to remove the uncured resin off your part. You might also notice that I have a tray around the printer. This is a great suggestion by Naomi, Sexy Cyborg. She has worked with resin printers as well. And if something goes wrong, you don't want that uncured resin spilling everywhere. It'll be an absolute nightmare to clean up. So a cheap sort of dinner tray, like a roasting tray like this, is just really cheap insurance in case something goes wrong in the printer, it'll pull into the tray, not all over the floor. And also while you're working with uncured resin, it's also kind of a good idea to have safety glasses because you're gonna be working with isopropyl alcohol, uncured resin, a mix of both, which is gonna be pretty toxic and nasty. You know, you only have two eyes, so you kind of wanna protect them just in case there's any splashes and it's just really cheap insurance. All right, so we're gonna crack open the anti-cubic photon. I've turned the machine off. And these machines are all kind of similar. They have a print platform that lowers into the bed 
and then it has a little way of removing it. So the Anycubic Photon has a really good little efficient screw here that you can just undo and then the whole thing comes free. Now, depending on how viscous the resin is, taking it out, it may drip, which is again why we have the tray, but in this case, it's actually quite a viscous resin, so I can just pop this off like this and then rotate it around. I got one drip there, but it was okay. It's not a big deal. And then the part's good to go, so we can transfer this to our finishing station. All right, guys, so what I have here is the platform and the print adhered to it. And a lot of these machines come with like a plastic spatula. I find them to be really crap. So I just use a metal one and I have a dedicated metal spatula for the resin printers because it does get uncured resin on it and you don't want to be taking this to your FGM machines and spreading uncured resin around. And below me, what I have here is a finishing station which was actually came with a form too, but the idea is really simple. So let me just crack it open. So inside here is two vats and I filled them with isopropyl alcohol. And the idea is you get the part, just prop it over, and in she goes. So what I'll usually do here is I'll take the platform and I will then put this back in the machine so I don't get resin any, on any of this part before I get my gloves dirty in the actual alcohol bath. So what I really liked about the Form 2 finishing station is it has this little tray which goes into the actual uh, isopropyl alcohol and holds the part. So it just drops in and you can just shake it around. Now, you can probably make one of these really easily with just like a little plastic sieve and a Tupperware container. This is way overkill, but basically all you do is just get the part and just shake it back and forth to agitate it. And what I'll usually do is do this for maybe, maybe a minute or so, just to get the loose resin off. If you like, you can actually get a toothbrush and grab the part and brush, brush resin off as well. If it's very delicate or it might get resin, resin pooling in areas, that helps. But for stuff like this, honestly, I'll just shake it back and forth and agitate it for a bit. All right guys, so something I need to mention as well is because we've contaminated this isopropyl alcohol or methylated spirits with uncured resin, it's now sort of like a biohazard material. So do not tip this down the drain or discard it in unsafe me methods. You'll need to take it to somewhere that can handle like paints and nasty chemicals for them to dispose properly. Personally, what I do is I actually just leave it open and let the isopropyl evaporate if I want to just store this and it does leave a film of the leftover resin, but at least it's contained and I'm not throwing it into the drain or, or doing any sort of damage. So now the part's done, I'm gonna take it out like this and take a look at it. Again, I'm wearing gloves, guys. And this is our uncured cured resin part. So this is going to be a little bit soft, a little bit delicate. If I stuck my thumbnail into it, it will probably damage it. So the next stage with, with uh, dealing with resin parts is to cure it. Now we have a few options for curing resin parts. You might have a UV curing station like they use with nail polish to cure nail polish. But because we live in Australia, it's really sunny outside with high UV index. So I'm just gonna take this outside, leave it in the sun for a couple of minutes. All right guys, we have our part out in the sun curing. You don't wanna leave it there for too long, just a couple of minutes, especially on a day as sunny and hot as this. And I'm done with my gloves and I've cleaned up my finishing station. So I've turned them inside out and they are now done. You can't reuse them. So they're gonna go into the bin. And I can't stress this enough, guys, that you want to make sure you minimize uncured resin going on any surfaces. So I'm usually very careful to make sure I don't touch the part uncured and then touch like the handle of the printer or anything else. I try to keep it as clean as possible. And if you do get uncured resin on things, you can of course use some isopropyl alcohol on a cloth to wipe it clean and keep it safe and remove that contamination because these resins really are pretty nasty. So there you have it guys, those are my tips for the safe and efficient running of these low cost resin systems. Again, I cannot stress enough that these resin systems, when the resin is uncured and liquid, it's not safe to touch. You cannot touch it. But once it's cured, it's fine. And following these steps and these basic tips, you'll get really, really good prints off these machines and you won't run into any major issues. Now the review for the Anycubic Mega is quite a while away, I've only just gotten it, but I thought it was a great machine to showcase the safety aspects and running of these machines. And if you did enjoy this video here on Makers Muse, guys, it is my aim to empower your creativity with technology. I would love to have you subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.